Dumela. Sanbonani. Abishin. Dimacherun. Your Majesties, Your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Chairperson of the SADC and President of Namibia, Dr. Hage Gengob, former President Thabo Mbeki and Mrs. Mbeki, former President Khalema Motlante and Mrs. Motlante, former President F.W. de Klerk and Mrs. de Klerk, all former heads of state and government, chairperson of the African Union Commission, Mama Grasa Michelle, Mama Ngema Zuma, the Speaker of our National Assembly, the Chairperson of the Council of Provinces, the Chief Justice of our Republic, Justice Mufem Mufem, the Deputy Chief Justice, Justice Zondo, members of the newly elected parliament, premiers, MECs, and mayors, leaders of our political parties, religious and traditional leaders, ambassadors and high commissioners, Veterans of our struggle, General Shoke, and the members of the armed forces in the leadership, General Sutole, and the members of and leaders of the police, distinguished guests, fellow South Africans. I stand before you having just taken the oath of office to be president of our beautiful country, South Africa. I am humbled by the trust that you have bestowed upon me, and I'm also aware of the challenges our country faces, but I'm also alive to the fact that our people are filled with hope for a better tomorrow. We gather here on the day that the people of our continent celebrate the unity of Africa. Today, as Africa Day, is a day of friendship, solidarity, and cooperation. It is a day on which we reaffirm our common commitment to an Africa that is at peace, that is prosperous, and that promises a better life and existence for its people. As South Africa, we are honored and deeply humbled by the presence here of heads of states and leaders from across the African continent. Your Excellencies, we are profoundly grateful to you for choosing to celebrate Africa Day amongst us, giving further poignancy to South Africa's transformation from a pariah state to a full and valued member of the family of African nations. We also recognize with appreciation those countries from other continents who have joined us here today. We remain eternally grateful 
to all nations represented here for the sacrifices and tireless contributions by your people and governments to the liberation of our land. Today, we reaffirm our determination to work with our sisters and brothers across the continent to realize the African Union's vision of Agenda 2063, to build the Africa that all Africans want, to forge a free trade area that stretches from Cape Town to Cairo, bringing growth and opportunity to all African countries, to silence the guns and let peace and harmony reign. Today, we declare that our progress as South Africa in all our endeavors depends on and cannot be separated from the onward march of our beloved continent, Africa. Esteemed guests and fellow South Africans, 25 years have passed since that glorious morning on which Nelson Kholitlatla Mandela was sworn in as the first president of a democratic South Africa. In the passage of that time, our land has known both seasons of plenty and times of scarcity. Our people have felt the warm embrace of liberty. They have rejoiced at the affirmation of their essential and equal humanity. They have found shelter and sustenance. They have found opportunity and purpose. As the shackles of oppression have fallen away, they have felt their horizons widen and their lives improve in a myriad ways. But our people have also known moments of doubt. They have felt the cold shadow of a past so cruel and iniquitous that it has at times threatened to eclipse the very achievement of their hard-won freedom. Despite our most earnest efforts, many South Africans still go to bed hungry. Many South Africans succumb to diseases that can't be treated. Many live lives of intolerable deprivation. Too many of our people do not work, especially the youth. In recent times, our people have watched as some of those in whom they had invested their trust have surrendered to the temptation of power and riches. They have seen some of the very institutions of our democracy eroded and resources squandered. The challenges that our country face are huge and they are real, but they are not insurmountable. They can be solved, and I extend here to say that they are going to be solved. In the face of these challenges, our people have remained resolute, resilient, and unwavering in their desire for a better South Africa. Through the irrefutable power of the ballot, on 8th May, South Africans declared the dawn of a new era. They have chosen hope over hopelessness. They have opted for unity over conflict and divisions. 
they have decided that they are going to remake our country as we give effort to their mandate we draw comfort from the knowledge that that which unites us is far more powerful and enduring than that which divides us. Despite our differences, despite a past of conflict and division and bitterness, despite also the fierce political contestation amongst 48 political parties in recent months, we all share the same hopes and fears, the same anxieties and aspirations. We all want our children to have lives that are better than our own, to have work that is dignified and rewarding. We are bound together by our determination as South Africans that never again shall the adversities of our past be visited on the people of this land. This is a defining moment for a young nation like ours. Today must be seen as the choice of history. It is a time for us to make the future that we yearn for. It is through our actions now that we will determine our destiny as a people. All South Africans want action. They just don't want words and promises. And there shall be action in our land to reshape our country in the image of our dreams. It is through our actions now that we will give form to the society which so many have fought and sacrificed and for which all of us yearn for. All South Africans yearn for a society defined by equality, by solidarity, by a shared humanity, by good service delivery. They yearn for a society in which our worth is determined by how we value others. It is a society that is guided by the fundamental human principle that says our constitution, the basic law of our land, continues to guide our way even at the darkest hour. As a nation, we therefore can no longer abide the grave disparities of wealth and opportunity that have defined our past and which threaten to imperil our future. It is our shared will and our shared responsibility to build a society that knows neither privilege nor disadvantage. It is a society where those who have much are willing to share with those who have little or nothing. It is a society where every person, regardless of race or sex or circumstance, may experience the fundamental necessities of a decent,
dignified life. Today, let us declare before the esteemed witnesses gathered here that such a South Africa is indeed possible. Let us declare our shared determination that we shall end poverty in South Africa within a generation. Let us declare that when we gather to celebrate the 50th year of our freedom, there shall no longer be any person in this land who is unable to meet their basic needs. That there should be no child who goes to bed hungry. Every school child will be able to read, and every person who wants to work will have a reasonable opportunity to find employment. As we make this bold declaration, we are aware of the depth of the challenges that we must confront. We are aware of the debilitating legacy of our past, nor the many difficulties of the present. To achieve the South Africa we want will demand fellow South Africans an extraordinary feat of human endeavor. The road ahead will be difficult and hard. We will have to use our courage, our wisdom, and perseverance to achieve this South Africa of our dreams. It will require an ambition that is rare, like our forebears who gathered so many years ago on a piece of felled in Clip Town to declare that the people shall govern. Let us aspire to a future beyond the probable. Let us reach, let our reach extend beyond our grasp. Let our gaze stretch beyond the horizon. Let us, as we embark on this new era, mobilize our every resource and summon our every capability to realize the vision of our founding mothers and fathers. Let us forge a compact, not merely as business and labor, not as those who govern and those who are governed, but as citizens and patriots of this great nation, free and equal and resolute. Let us forge a compact for growth and economic opportunity, for productive lands and viable communities, for knowledge, innovation, and for services that are affordable, accessible, and sustainable. Let us also forge a compact of an efficient, capable, and ethical state a state that is free from corruption, for companies that generate social value and propel human development, and for elected officials and public servants who faithfully serve no other cause than the cause of our people. We must be a society that values excellence, that rewards effort and hard work and rejects mediocrity. We must at the same time be a society that values its young people by creating a conducive environment for them to gain skills and be productively employed to develop our country. Today, let us celebrate the great strides we have made, demonstrated so clearly in the incoming parliament,
to raise the prominence and contribution of women in public life. Let us work together to fundamentally and forever change the power relations between men and women in our country. Let us end the dominion that men claim over women, the denial of opportunity, the abuse and the violence, the neglect and the disregard for each other's human rights. Let us build a truly non-racial society, one that belongs to all South Africans and which all South Africans belong. Let us build a society that protects and values those who are vulnerable and who for too long have been rendered marginal. A society where disability is no impediment, where there is tolerance, and where no person is judged on their sexual orientation, where no person suffers prejudice because of the color of their skin, the language of their birth, or their country of origin. Let us preserve our natural resources for future generations as we work with greater purpose to end the human destruction of our world. On this Africa Day, on the day that our nation enters a new era of hope and renewal, we recall and celebrate that Africa is the birthplace of all humanity. We recall that it was around 100,000 years ago that a small group of some of the first humans set foot beyond this continent. With them, they took a sense of perseverance and a talent for innovation, which enabled them to progressively occupy every corner of the world. Humanity has achieved a great deal over the intervening millennia, and all by virtue of talents which were evolved on this continent. Africa is poised once again to rise, to assume its place among the free and equal nations of the world. We must use this innovative talent that originated in Africa to embrace and use the fourth industrial revolution to develop Africa, to create jobs for the youth and empower the women of our continent. Africa is poised to realize the vision of Pixley Kaisaka Sam more than a century ago when he said, the brighter day is rising upon Africa. Already he continued to say, I see the chains dissolved, her desert plains red with harvest, her Abyssinia, meaning Ethiopia, and her Zululand, meaning KwaZulu Natal, the seats of science and religion, reflecting the glory of the rising sun from the spires of their churches and universities. Her Congo and her Gambia, whitened with commerce, her crowded cities, sending forth the hum of business, and all her sons and daughters employed in advancing the victories of peace, greater and more abiding than the spoils of war." Close quote. It is to this brighter day that we now turn our eyes to a vista that is rich 
with the hues of hope and promise. It is you, the people of South Africa, who have spoken. With your votes, you place your confidence and your trust in the men and women who now sit in our sixth democratic parliament. These 490 men and women whom you have sent to parliament seem to have had the same call that the Lord made to Isaiah when he said, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Those that you elected have now said, send us. They have said, Tumamina, Rumanna. You have chosen them. You have chosen them to safeguard your rights, to improve your lives, and to build our country, a country that should be united, strong, and truly free. You, the people of South Africa, have sent them, and you have sent me as your president. Having taken the oath of office, I am saying now, South Africa, Yebo, Tumamina. And I pledge here today that I will serve you side by side and work with you to build the South Africa that we all want and deserve. A new era has truly dawned in our country. A brighter day is rising upon South Africa, and a brighter day is rising upon our beloved continent, Africa. Nkosi sigelela i Africa. Upagamise upondolwayo i Africa yetu. Morena, buluka Africa ya runa. Ubuluke si chabasaruna. I thank you as we ask that the Lord should bless Africa. Thank you very much.